Hi, I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to make a wire maze game. The goal of this game is to move the wire loop wand from one end of the wire maze to the other without letting the wires touch. If they do touch, you lose. I designed this game with the traditional buzzer and with a silent mode with LEDs. The two wires act as a switch, opening and closing the circuit. There's a second switch here, which allows you to select the mode. It's a single pole double throw switch that's on off on, so you can select either mode, but still turn the game off. Let's take a look at our circuit diagram to understand how the game works. There are two loops in our circuit, one that goes from the battery through the switch and to the speaker. The second goes from the battery through the switch, through the LEDs, and all back to ground. To make the game work, we need to put our wire loop and maze after our battery pack, but before our mode switch. After the mode switch, the LEDs and the speaker are in their own circuit, each connected to one of the terminals on the switch. This speaker is rated for 3 to 24 volts, so I chose to use a 6 volt battery pack. The LEDs are rated for 2 volts, so I've added 200 ohm resistors for each LED. All right, let's get started with our circuit. Safety first. I'm gonna run ground on this bottom row on the perf board. So I'm gonna place my LEDs so that there's enough room for the resistors to go below them. I'm starting with my LEDs because they're one of the biggest parts. Remember, your LEDs are polar, so you wanna make sure that the short negative lead is going towards the ground plane. Okay, now that I have my LEDs, I know that I need to bend these leads towards where the resistors are gonna go, so I'm gonna solder those in place. Now I'm gonna insert the resistors. One lead is gonna go towards the ground plane and the other towards the negative lead of the LED. Remember, resistors are non-polar, so it doesn't matter which direction you place them. Now I'm gonna trim the negative leads on the LEDs where they meet the resistor. Remember to hold on to your leads so they don't go flying away and possibly into somebody's eye. We're gonna hang on to these to save them to use later. I bent the LED side lead of the resistor towards the LED. This will help hold the resistor in place while soldering. The LEDs are all in parallel, so we can bend all of the positive LED leads together into a single row. I'm gonna do the same with the remaining resistor leads. Now it's time to add our switch. Normally you would use a through hole switch like this, which is designed for perf board. See, it goes in there nice and easy. But I'm being picky and I wanted a nice big tactile switch, so I'm using a panel mount switch. They're not really designed to work with perf board, so to make it work, I'm going to add some of the pins that I cut off from the LEDs. I'm going to take these leads and bend them through the holes and then solder them on at a 90 degree angle so that I can place them through the perf board and have the switch sitting directly on the perf board. I'm placing my switch near the edge of my perf board so that this lip right here is against the edge of the perf board for physical reinforcement, and then I'm going to solder my leads into these holes. For physical reinforcement of the switch, you can either add a wire around it and solder that down to your board or just bend it if you use solid core wire, or you can add a little bit of hot glue. Now I'm gonna connect one side of the switch to the positive leads of the LED. Next, we're gonna connect our buzzer. We wanna have the positive red lead of the buzzer go to the other side of the switch, and the black lead is gonna go to our ground plane. Since the wires for the buzzer are a little fragile, I'm gonna add some hot glue on the non-solder side of the perf board for reinforcement. Now it's time to add our battery pack. Now we want the black wire of the battery pack connected to our ground leads here, and the red side is gonna be connected to our wand. Now you could solder this directly to your perf board, but I like to have things modular and changeable, so I'm using header pins for everything. So I've attached female header pins to the end of my battery pack, and I'm gonna add male header pins onto my perf board for the battery pack, the opposite for the wand. I used one of the leads I trimmed off of one of my components to connect the ground plane to one of the pins on the male header pin. 
I'm going to place the female header pin perpendicular to the male header pin so that you can access it a little bit easier when I'm plugging and unplugging my parts. I'll add leads from components to the back side to connect them. I'm going to use more spare leads to connect both pins of the female header pin to the second pin on the male header pin. Both leads of the female header pin can be connected because they both go to the wand, and so it's all the same connection. We'll set our circuit aside for a minute because it's time to make the wire maze portion of our game. It's useful to have something to attach your game to for stability. I'm going to use this piece of wood, but really you can use anything that's sturdy and will keep your game stable. Let's talk about what kind of wire you want to use for the maze and the wand portion of this game. You want to have something that's stiff and kind of thick so that it holds its shape when you bend it. You also want your wire to be bare, so bare copper wire is best. This can be found in a spool, or I found this at my local hardware store in the electrical section. In a pinch, you can use garden wire or enameled wire, but you want to make sure to remove the coating first. You can do this with an X-Acto knife or some sandpaper. The wire for the maze is thick and can be difficult to solder to. I also want a really solid physical connection on my ends for my game to be nice and sturdy. So I'm gonna use a regular hardware screw to connect one side of the maze to my board and the other side I picked up a screw terminal. The screw terminal allows me to screw one end of my maze to it and there's a second screw that I can use to connect a wire from the maze to my circuit board. For my wand, I used the thicker gauge wire so that it's nice and stiff and doesn't go anywhere. I left a hole in my loop so that I can take it on and off the game more easily. At the other end of the wand, I connected a longer, more flexible wire that'll be used to connect it to the circuit board. I stripped quite a bit of the end of the wire off so that I could wrap it around the wand and solder it. I wrapped the handle of the wand with electrical tape as well to prevent shorts while playing the game. At the end of the flexible wire connected to the wand, I have my male header pin that'll be used to connect it to the board. I'm gonna add some hot glue to help reinforce it. The last thing to do is take the wire that's connected to our wire maze and solder it to the center terminal of our switch. Okay, everything's done. Now we just need to plug in our battery pack and our wand and play our game. All right, let's see how good I am. Here we go. Oh man, I'm too good. Oh God, I have a shaky hand. Oh no, ah! That's really annoying. Let's go silent mode. I'm terrible at this game. Oh gosh, look at my shaky hands. But hey, I'm not bothering anyone because it's not making any noise. Yeah, silent mode. If you want to make your game more difficult, try making the loop in your wand smaller or add extra twists and bends to your maze. Don't be afraid to experiment. Maybe try making it vertical with an open end. If there are other projects or concepts you'd like to learn about, tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!